Testing one, two. Testing one, two. Oh, let's see if we got everything up and running. What's up, everybody? It is the weekend. It is the weekend. Yes, it is. I didn't, uh... One thing I didn't do is I didn't, uh... <laughs> I didn't, um... Dang. You know, I didn't do, like, my, uh... Thumbnail and stuff like that, but I'll, I'll get to it later. So, what's up, everybody? This is the this is Day Sun Civil of Civil Days Music, and I just wanted to come to you live. Let's go out and make sure we bring some people into the live. So, let me go out and share the live. So, if you give me a second, uh, I want to go and share the live with other people. This one is spontaneous. I got to tell y'all, I really didn't. You know, I planned on doing a live yesterday, but I ended up doing it today um, and, you know, working on some things behind the scenes. Um, this is Civil Days Music. Our goal is to inspire. Our goal is to, you know, help others who may be on the cusp of, you know, giving up. Those that have given up their dreams and came back to it at a later time. I'm here to tell you that it can be done. At a later time, you know, you, you may have wanted to do it in your youth, but maybe the doors didn't open. Maybe God didn't open the doors at that time. Maybe he decided that it was just a different door, a different time for it to be open to you. And now is the time. So I want to inspire you with tips. I want to inspire you with uh, different tools. I want to inspire you with different things that you can use to produce your music and be the best producer you can be to be the best artist and creator you can be as well as me trying to push this dream this this goal and this dream at the same time never giving up never giving up all right and i came to y'all today because well before i get started let me get some more people in here but uh but really i just you know i've been looking for the documentary looking for it i couldn't find it i kept entering it in wrong uh come to find out it's a new york times piece so I want to talk about that today. But before I get into the things I want to talk about, let's see if we can get some uh, people up in here and uh, <laughs> start a conversation and have a conversation going with uh, other people. So uh, if you give me one second, I will definitely uh, let me do this. Go to my channel. We are live. You're about to hear me. Definitely about to hear me come through. So let me share this with other people. Let me let them know that I am live. Uh, I'm gonna start with uh, my guys. <laughs> then um, I'm gonna share this to Facebook. I gotta put the noise reduction, you know, a noise cancellation on here at some point. Ah, wrong page. I don't want it on that one. Discard. So give me one second. But what I what I do have to say is, man, I was watching the documentary and I was really inspired and elated. And it made me want to talk and address some things at the same time. So, you know, but I was I was really happy for it. I thought it was a great documentary. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you're just coming on, I'm talking about the documentary. Um, you're about to hear my music for a second. Uh, I'm talking about the documentary with uh, Jay Dilla and talking about his roots, his music, his upbringing. <laughs> Man, there was so many things to touch on, so many topics to really touch on when watching the documentary it took me back a couple of years when i was um kind of uh when i was just into his music man you talking about into it i was in the slum village you know i was into a trap called quest you know when i first heard running i thought it was amazing um tracks with buster and, and things of that nature i mean i just dilla was one of my favorites you know my f premiere pete rock uh large professor you know, Large Professor started it all for me. Um, and from Large Professor, you know, I like No ID, Eric Sermon, you know, 
it was shoot, man. It's too many to name because you can't think of all of them. You don't want to give someone, you know, don't the problem. Beat miners. You don't want to give certain producers, you know, their props. You know what I'm saying? You want to give everybody the props that they deserve. So trying to name your favorite producers or a list of producers sometimes is hard to go by, you know, but Jay Dilla definitely is one of them, you know, and everybody would say that he's your favorite producer's favorite producer. You know, I mean, people stole his style, ripped his style, you know, did the claps, you know. I'm, I'm going to get to, you know, some of the things that I, 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 didn't, I don't like, you know. Um, shout out to Missy, you know, because Missy, she does the, uh, she works with Ma Dukes and she does all of the, uh, like, the Dilla events in February. I don't know if she still does it, but I know she used to do it at some point. Um, she was like the Baltimore hub with that um and, uh, and other people as well um so give me a second i want to type this in and then see what's going on with the people with the people i mean i get too many people on tonight because i didn't notify anybody i didn't put anything out there um thanks thank you for everyone that's been supporting me that supported the you know my kids that's been going to gum road and things of that, I'm about to say, things of that nature. That's always my tagline or my transition. So, um, let's see, going live. Um, beats. People might be watching TV, watching all kinds of different things, and here I am with this. <laughs> at the last minute i gotta stop doing this last minute so let me let me shift a little bit so i'm learning more about marketing and when it comes to marketing what the one one thing you have to do when you market you have to make sure that you put yourself in a position where um you're giving people time to see a product and when people can see a product then they're more likely to purchase and I'm going to tell you, you know, I went to school, study business, but there's nothing like actually doing business, you know what I mean, or performing business. What I mean by that is, you know, my wife, she sold stuff, but what she would do is she would set it up. And what she would what, what she would do is she would take pictures of her products, put them out there on the, inter uh, on the Internet. She would let people know when her show was coming on, give people the times ahead of time. What's up, Ray? <laughs> yeah, I know we met at Guitar Center. What's up, bro? <laughs> oh man, thank you so much for copping the pack, man. I truly appreciate that. Uh, leave me a review. Let me know how you like it. You know, you know I mean, I truly appreciate that. Um, so what I want to say is, you know, she would market it and set it up and put herself out there, and you know, she was getting those customers, man. And then she started to expand. She brought people on. You just got to be careful sometimes because the people you bring on may be the same ones that try to sabotage you. Do, 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 message. All right. So, but yeah, put yourself out there. You can you can do this. Um, so I watched the Jay Dilla documentary. Uh, um, the Jay Dilla documentary that was on uh, Hulu. And I have to say that I was so happy and elated. So, uh, it, it, you know, they talked to Q-Tip, or they did interviews with Q-Tip. They talked to um, my man, Raphael Sadiq. They talked to Raphael Sadiq. Um, they did interv not an interview with him per se, but I think they got an interview with um, Ali Shaheed Muhammad. Um, they did Jazzy Jeff, man, J that Jazzy Jeff. You know, I love what he did on there as far as, you know, how he broke the beats down and how he talked about, you know, the, you know, the, the, the how he took samples, how Jay Dilla took samples and flipped them ways that nobody else would think of flipping them to put his stamp on it. And I did not know because I'll be honest, Frank and Dank's album, I, I you know, I listened to a couple songs, but I never got the album. I didn't know it was all original Jay Dilla production. Like, he didn't use any samples. Like, you know, I thought that was cool, but it's kind of funny, man. 
that the moment that he used didn't want to use samples and you know he tried to went back and make it original that that people <laughs> MCA dropped him you know it was a lot of things going on and I always wondered and I don't know about y'all but I always wondered did uh, did he produce the um, Crooklyn because I don't know it just has his it has it, and I wonder, did he produce some stuff on Mob Deep's tape? You know, but but they said stuff that went under the Uma. I don't want to get stuff mixed up with Q-Tip, you know. But he just felt like his face wasn't being recognized. He would produce beats, and then what would happen is the Uma tag would be under it, and it wouldn't get him the business that, you know, he really wanted. But anyway, you know, that was the bad. But it was just good. It was in inspiring. They say, you know, he really didn't do a lot of interviews but I have to, people talk about Dilla and being one of the best producers out there, but he was a, he was a dope spitter too. Um, he had hot lyrics, you know what I mean? And I think not only with the DJing that really helped him out, but it wasn't just the DJing, but it was also the fact that um, if my audio's good, let me know. But it, it was the fact that he, um, not only could he DJ well, but it was the fact that um, <clears throat> it was the fact that he was an MC. Um, hold on. <clears throat> Sorry about that. It was the fact that he was a DJ. He was an MC. Not only that, you know, it's just he he just worked well with people, and it meshed well with the way he worked with people. So I, I think it was a good thing, and I, you know. Uh, so it made me think about me as a producer. Um, it made me, because, you know, I started out as an MC, I DJ a little bit. I'm not the best. You know, I was more cutting and scratching and blending. Uh, but it's been far years removed. So, um, but I loved it when I was doing it. So it's it's a great documentary. Um, and then the part where he just talks about how he just wanted to produce. He didn't want to go out. So then... When he didn't want to go out or go from place to place or studio to studio, he brought everybody to Detroit, which made Detroit a hub again because people was just coming. And they talk about, you know, his sound. Robert Glasper, Robert Glasper was talking about how he thought that his sound, Jay Dilla's sound, is Neo Soul. Um, but I don't know. Uh, did Michelle and Diggio Cello come first? And, you know, she's from D.C., uh, she was on Madonna's label with Maverick Records, but that's because that's kind of the time when that neo soul hit Michelle and Diggy Ocello. You know, and then you had the acid jazz that was taking place. It was kind of like a mixture. You had the brand new heavies, and you know that that sound kind of you know came first. You know, you had that acid jazz, and you had that um, you know it was just a real funky, smooth sound. And you know, and then later I started to hear more. Neo stuff and people forget about uh, uh, Maxwell and Stuart Matthewman who was a part of Sade's label and I feel like like that's the next transition because you had Sade then you had Stuart Matthewman who was working with Maxwell and you know then that Neo soul kind of came out of that um, looks like we got three people up in here um, what up everybody if you just tuning in if you're just tuning in you know, I just decided to do a quick live. This is Day Sun Civil, Civil Days Music. Uh, thank y'all for supporting me, supporting the channel. Thank you for getting me to uh, 2,292 subscribers. Uh, thank you for all the views and the watch hours. Make sure y'all like, comment, subscribe. Um, and then, you know, if you comment, basically, you know, like what type of production equipment you're using. Um, what are your dreams? You know, what are your goals? What are your aspirations? What are some things you want to do? You know, let's talk about it. Let's talk about the direction you want to take. Do you see yourself as, oh, I don't want to do this. It's just a hobby. Or are you really passionate about this music thing? Um, and that takes me back to the Dilla documentary. He was passionate. He was, he was a trained musician. Not only was he a trained musician. What I mean by trained, like he took music classes. His father was a musician. Come to find out, he had all these bands coming in and out of the house. And, you know, the mother, uh, my Dukes was scared that the same thing would happen to him because it just didn't pop off for him, even though the father had a lot of things going on. 
So it goes to show when you got that music influence around you, you know, it's that, that you got to keep it spark, sparked and you have to keep moving with it. Um, let me give a shout out to a couple people. I want to give a shout out to Ray. Met him this weekend. Uh, I know I said Roy on the video. I met Ray in my other video. Uh, uh, shout out to Khalif Wynn. Shout out to DC Carson. Shout out to my man Jazzmatic. Shout out to Pulse Music. Shout out to, um, to um, what's my man? Oh my goodness. Uh, Creative D. Will. Man, I can't forget Creative D. Will. Dope homie. Uh, got great things coming up. Um, but yeah, that documentary was amazing. You know, I'm sitting there. <laughs> what's up, DC Carson? I'm sitting up there doing the dishes, man. I'm sitting up there, you know, all in that because I remember that time. I remember that time. I remember the music. I remember the feel. I remember when the album got delayed. I remember when it didn't get started playing like here in uh, the Maryland area, the Baltimore area. I remember when, it, you know, there's a like an underground scene. There was an underground scene here. And when it didn't get played till about, was it 97 or 99? Then you could hear them cutting it up on the radio. But it's like, man, this album was three years old. You know, it just didn't get put out the way it was supposed to. Um, but yeah, man, you're talking about a Dilla junkie. That's why I said when I make these beats and then you put your beat on forums and then people be like, oh, you don't know nothing about Dilla. I'm like, man, I'm 46 years old. I was there. It'd be people that didn't even experience Dilla. They just listened to his albums. Like, like it was so cool when you heard a batch from Dilla. This is in 2006, 2009. This is in 97, you know what I mean? Or in the 2000s when you heard like a batch from Dilla. And now you can go on the internet and you hear the batches all the time. You know what I mean? Or you, you hear Dilla, which leads me to this. And this was the main thing that I thought about. Um, it's mighty funny to me. That, well, before I say that, they said Dilla switched his styles. Um, Jazzy Jeff was like, Dilla switched his style. I'm not going to tell you the whole documentary, but you got to watch it. He was like, Jay Dilla switched his styles like five times before you get to the one that he was currently with him. Black Milk said the same thing. See, that's and that's what I like. You heard from Black Milk. I wish I could hear from young RJ, his uh, views and how he thought as well, because he worked with him as well. Um, and the missing piece to it all is Amp Fiddler. Amp Fiddler, the keyboardist for Parliament Funkadelic. He's the key to it all. He's the one that introduced him to Q-Tip. Q-Tip talked about that on the Red Bull series. And um, and he just kept pumping up uh, Dilla. Black Milk is so underrated. I mean, come on now. If, if you were like me, you were loving those Black Milk albums and the Black Milk productions. The stuff he did with, um, dang, what's my man from Detroit? Guilty Simpson. That he did with Guilty Simpson, the stuff that he did with uh, Sean Price, you know, and his own original stuff. I mean, like, it's just, I just think that the, like, now would be a great time for him to come back. You know, now that Boom Bap is coming back. Even though, even though he still wasn't, he's a producer, so he couldn't really be pigeonholed. If he wanted to do other music, he could, because when you listen to Black Milk, he really experimented. But to me, Black Milk really held on to that. You know, that, that that Dilla vibe, you know what I mean? And then just put his own, you know, push on it, you know. Um, then, uh, but Amp Fiddler is the key to it all, man. He's the key to it all. He's the one that put um, Dilla in the right place. Come to find out they knocked on his door and and knocked on his door. When they knocked on his door, you know, they, they told Amp Fiddler they want to make beats. And Amp Fiddler's like, who's going to make the beats, me or you? And they were like, no, he can do it. You know, so he taught him how to use the um, MPC-60. So Dilla started out with the XP SP-60. But before that, this is for every old head. <laughs> for every old head that has done this. It says Stone's Throw had a magical lineup. But yes, they did. You know, Stone's Throw, which I'm acute to something else. And I don't know, maybe Southerners will feel this way, some way about it. But, um about something else I want to think. I hope, I, hopefully I don't forget. But yeah, you're right. Stone's Throw had a magical lineup. Um, so the crazy thing is, um, Ant Fiddler 
you know, showed him how to use the NPC 60. So he started, you from GA? I'm originally from South Carolina, uh, out here in Maryland, been here for years. You know, I joke with my students, I'm more Baltimore than you. And they were like, ah, you cap it, Mr. Helton. <laughs> they sound civil, anyway. Um, but uh, so the thing about it was, um, so Amp Fiddler, after teaching him how to use the MPC, he said he listened to his beats. And come on, all old, old, old heads going like this. They said he would use pause button, um, no, the tape decks and do pause beats. And he would keep pausing the beats until he can get it to do what he wanted. And I was like, man, this is so cool because anybody that's made, I got tapes and tapes of pause breaks that I made which uh, got me into the, got me into this production thing. Shout out to my man Lynn, rest in peace. Uh, we when we were in college, we would do battles, and we would battle each other, and we would make like pause button tapes, and then we would throw shots inside the tapes, inside of the you know we would get the rapper to say this and say that, and then just had the beat rocking. Man, we would have people coming into that dorm room, and they were loving it. But anyway, anyway. Um, but yeah, to hear what he was doing just with a with a tape recorder, and I'm not gonna give it all. I want you to see something when you see it. So the documentary the documentary's name is The New York Times Presents The Legacy of Jay Dilla. Say so yeah, you commented on my Reddit beat, I think was a Southern Jazz beat. Like, okay, cool. Cool. Yeah, man, I I love the Reddit community. I love going there and uh like networking and you know hearing people's stuff it's inspiring um plus i try to answer questions whenever i can and get questions answered as well so yeah man i'm glad i'm glad of that um so i don't want to say too much but i do want to say this jazzy jeff said he was in california when he heard um i don't know mm -hmm. I don't know why, you, you know, Christian, I can't get that far with that anymore. So um, that's when uh, he called up to the radio station, called the DJ because he knew the DJ. And he said, I got to get that record. So then that's when he put his touch on the record, you know, but it was cool. He said he thought it was amazing how he took James Brown's voice and chopped it up to the point that it was a part of the the rap, you know, but it was good, man. It was an amazing documentary. Sad that he was gone. I, I remember working when they said he died and I was just like, I was listening, they don't know. I was working, doing accounting, which I was never good at accounting. Had my, I was listening to <laughs> Donuts at the same time, because I got it the same day, listening to Donuts. And then you got the news days later that he passed and it was just, <sighs> You know, man, what would it be like if he was still here? Um, but yeah, man, I, I'm glad everybody's here. Um, remember, y'all look at the link in bio. He said you would say earlier about YouTube and it being so easy to find the deep cuts. I never in a million years would have thought that you do. <sighs> I know, not back then. I. I also think that if high tech had kept going, you know, you know, he did the stuff with Dr. Dre and stuff like that. But I think if he kind of kept going in a way, he would be that same household name. <clears throat> yeah, man, he made it in his bed. Yo. And they, they talk about that in the documentary, too, which is cool. And there's something else that's like really emotional and really sentimental. I'm not going to give you that up. But towards the end of the movie, it's like really sentimental and, you know, it was really good. Yeah, no, no, no. He shouldn't have stopped. Even though, you know, he was still producing for Dre and stuff like that. But, no, nah, High Tech, High Tech was the man, you know. Dilla was mad at him for a while. <laughs> he felt like High Tech was stealing his style. But, you know, two different. when you listen to High Tech, High Tech is High Tech and Dilla is Dilla. You know, a lot of people... You know, I'm telling you, when you check it out, if you have a Hulu or I think it's on Tubi or something like that, 
you know, check it out because you will definitely enjoy it. You will definitely like it. It's a great documentary, a great documentary. If you love hip hop, if you love Dilla, you know, you're going to love that. Which leads me to this. This was my big question and the big thing that I thought about. I've seen a lot of people come, use his style, get their fame, and then move on to something else. I'm not going to name producers' names, but if I go back and look at their prior work, they have like three or four albums where they sound like they're emulating Dilla's beats, and they sound like Dilla. Then they move, they learn the guitar, they learn this, that. Next thing, they're making rock and roll and all kinds of... It's like people take a style. I like what Jazzy Jeff said one time. He was like, people think that that's the only style Dilla had and don't realize that he had so many other styles. You know what I mean? Um, he was a producer, you know what I mean? He, he made some amazing work. They do be biting. What's up, uh, God Mellon? Melanin, excuse me. What's up, God Melanin? Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you for watching my content. I'm very appreciative. I was just looking at my numbers before, you know, I started ramping up and thinking and looking at analytics and stuff like that. And, you know, thinking that this was far fetched. But, you know, I, I'm, I'm thankful that something that I can create um, is a blessing to others. And all I'm doing is just showing my love for music and my love for hip hop and things of that nature. You know, not just hip hop, but music as a general, because in general, because me growing up, there was always music. My father, he loved blues and he loved soul. And my mother, she, she liked blues, but she liked rock. She liked country. She liked soul. She liked opera. She like uh, jazz, you know, all her records, like when I would go and get her records were like soul and jazz. What's up? Why, body, what's going on, man? How you feeling? <laughs> so, you know, so that's kind of the background I come from, you know, like even like when I, was ma I make my beats, I try to make them, you know, kind of melodic, you know. I can make them dirty. I can grunge it up, stuff like that, too. But, you know, it's always been kind of melodic you know uh, i just you know i nothing is greater than a, a, a intro from barry white you know barry white can take you on a ride with his intros you know what i mean so that's the kind of stuff that i try to bring you know and i i love you know my favorite producers i forgot to mention q-tip is one of one of my favorite and just blaze too i know they do the just blaze What's his name? You know, um, 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 Bink. I'm sorry, not was, you know, Bink's one of my favorite producers as well. She said, yo, thank you so much, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's, it's all about the music. It's about the beats. You know what I mean? It's about the history of the music and where we get the samples from. One guy commented. He said, man, I love your channel. <laughs> Them high hats with Barry White. You right. He said, I love your channel, your channel, but DJ Premier may not like it. <laughs> I, said, I said, hopefully it does. I was in the seventh in the back of the gray 1993 Nissan stanza when I heard Curtis Mayfield diamond in the back. Oh, my goodness. I knew that was beautiful music. Come on now. Come on. DJ Premier right here from the... <laughs> you see... The South, you know what I'm saying? The South, I tell people all the time, you know, the South, you know, he he brought that brought that feel that changed that New York hip hop, you know. I also got a, uh, but you know, there's some some dope producers out there, man. You know, I I feel like now in today's society, I feel like people try to diminish premieres, you know, influence, you know, but people don't realize that we were there. We were there. We knew how it was back then. You know, I watched the guy, um, the group, Eat Beats. Uh, they all like, you know, they all, they're, currently they're putting um, AZ versus uh, Mike Geronimo, which I think Mike Geronimo is Mike Geronimo's very slept on. But uh, they're comparing them in their albums. And some things I'd be sitting like, yo, how y'all feel that way? You know, I'm sorry, one of the greatest albums ever made was Daily Operation to me. 
daily operation. That's when Premier hit that. Doo, 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 doo. That's that's just my childhood. Like when Kanye was doing his MTV series and he was just talking about going to sleep with a gang star and Earth, Wind and & Fire and stuff. That's another group, Earth, Wind & Fire, when you can hear the instruments go from one side of the headphones to the other, you know, or listening to old music and you can catch the drums in one ear. But you hear all this stuff that touches your sensory perception. You say, I just put a AZ acapella on one of my beats last week. Yeah, man. That's that's what we, I wish. Uh, like, I, I noticed, I saw some people, like, it's easy to do that on Reddit. It's easy to do it on TikTok than it is on YouTube. They try to get you for everything. Um, but yeah, man, uh, great documentary. Um, I got more stuff coming, more beats. Um, if you take a look, if you're getting serious about your music, Commodores play live, man. I wish I could have seen the Commodores. I saw Earth, Wind & Fire like in 1997. I think I, either 97 or 96. Uh, I think I came up here, it might have been 97. I saw at the pier in the Inner Harbor, Baltimore. We saw, uh, I saw Earth, Wind & Fire and Maxwell. You know, and then, uh, I mean, amazing concert. I mean, Maxwell was one of my favorite artists. I always wish I could have worked with him um, one day. You know, and you'd be like, well, what could you do for <laughs> somebody like Maxwell? But yeah, but I think, you know, some people think that Dilla created the Neo Soul. I think he influenced it. But I I remember in 93 hearing Michelle and Diggy Ocello and hearing her influence, you know, and I think, to me, that on top of acid jazz is where I heard, like, the biggest, you know, change. And then you had, you know, groups like um, Never Stop Never Giving, Never Stop Never Giving Up. Um, what up? What's up, man? He says, uh, I will say that the silver lining on YouTube, though, the producer community is so strong and a lot of guys, including you, are gatekeeping the culture and that will always be appreciated. I just try to, you know, me, I'm, thank you, brand new heavies. It's funny, I said it earlier, but then I couldn't remember. Yeah, but brand new heavies. I used to love Groove Theory too, man. Um, uh, it's some it's some other, see, my sister was into so much, man. Yeah, brand new heavies was the band. My sister was into so much so that, you know, she loved the UK bands, uh, Incognito and, you know, she would have the mixtapes, you know, the the, the Prince mixtapes and the, you know, the acid jazz and all that stuff. You know, it was so that influence and her bringing that influence just influenced me so much, you know. And, you know, back then when you watched, when you watched BET, BET had different shows. You had your soul show. You had the show where. You know, you heard different uh, music. Then you had the show where you got African rhythms and all that stuff. I mean, so, oh, and that's another thing. My mother loved Calypso. She loved Soka. She loved reggae, dance hall. I mean, all it, it was just a, a hodgepodge in our household. You know, we were the on Sunday morning. Uh, you could hear, you could hear gospel, you know, and then you, you may hear um, Phyllis Hyman. You hit, but the radio stations played everything back then. You could hear rock and roll. You could hear. It's not like today where everything is like in an urban area and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Or urban radio stations only plays this, plays this, and you know it was. It, you could hear so many different things. But yeah, back to the documentary though. That pause button mix. I wish I had a tape deck. I would, but I wouldn't be able to play it here on YouTube. You know. Because some of the stuff would probably get dinged or hit or something like that. But yeah, man, you know, it's a great documentary. And it's the New York Times presents the legacy of Jay Dilla. And it was it was really good. But yeah, but like I said earlier, I get tired of people. They'll come, they'll take Dilla, and then they'll move on and do something else. Or they be trying to take it for themselves. Or if you do something, like I did a... Um, I did a remake of um, the was it the red mm, shine when it says shine 
Yo, I put it in the, and someone said, oh, they ain't, they ain't no dealer. You don't know what you're doing. I'm like, dude, I was there. I was in that time period. What are you talking about? I know about the shifting of the drums. People forget about, um, people, people forget about this one crew. Hold on for a second. I know you should never leave the screen, but wait. Let me show you how much of a music junkie I am. I'm gonna tell you this right here. I'm gonna show you. Sorry about that. So back in like, let me see if they got the date on here. So back in like, oh, this is 2012. 2012, Illmind is on here too. You had the Lewis Din battles. I'll put it on this one. Let's see if we can pick it up. Behind Closed Doors. You had the Lewis Din, and then they started you know, a young beat butcher is on here. <laughs> they had a Seth Daddy, Redmatic, uh, or some people we know now. Ill Mind, Crisis, House Shoes, Beat Butcher on here. Yo, I used to get these, man. And then you had a J Sue and the crew, and they were taking the MPC 2000 XL, and they were on the grid shift. I wanted one so bad, couldn't get it, man. I wanted an MPC 2000 XL so bad, but I got that 4000 though. Yeah, I got that 4000. I loved it, man. So, music production. Hey, I got all these people on here. What type of equipment do you use? My man said, was Buster in the documentary? He always put at least one. Yo, he he. Uh, they got him talking about Dilla, and and he he talks about his process. No, Crisis is still dope. You gotta uh, check his um, like he um, every now and then he'll like put a video out of him beat making or something like that. You know, Ninth Ninth Wonder's always making a beat. Um, but yeah, Buster's in a the documentary. They talk to him and he's explained the process that he used for uh, the song that Dilla produced on his first album. <clears throat> yeah, it's crazy. NPC Live 2 Retro. I want more again. Dude, don't be like me. <laughs> Let me tell you what happens. Your wife ends up mad at you. <laughs> Got into Dilla in 90, yup, Far Side, Lab, Lab, California. Yo, Rip X is amazing. Can I, can I? <laughs> <laughs> I got it because I'm going to do it. I didn't buy it. I don't know my man said. I don't care. Rip X is amazing, man. I, It's the best. So I've used Moises. I've do that, that LA LA, the La La, whatever. I don't like it because you can't get a lot out of it. Um, like you can get an instrumental and you can get an acapella. But this Rip X, oh my goodness. You know, I watched, so I got, you can get a trial period. What's up, Gary? What's going on, man? You can get a trial period with it. Um, and you talking about the, I can't wait, you know. So I want to be careful about what I can do and what I can't do. Because, you know, YouTube will hit you for anything. Somebody got me for a video I posted. And I was just like, man. <sighs> So you just gotta be careful. Make sure your stuff is original. Or if you do, um, see, I don't know yet. Um, I have to go back. I haven't priced it. Let me look. Um, excuse me for the price. It might be expensive as crap. Ripex Deep Mix is only $79.20. That's for the deep remix. The deep audio is two thirty seven sixty. Yep, that's the price. Two thirty seven sixty. <laughs> yeah, there are different different tiers. You're right. You're right. But no, I've been playing around with the trial version. What is this? My third day. Yeah. You get 21 days for the trial version. <coughs> Excuse me. 
31 days for the trial version. And it's dope. It is. It is. Being able to take the vocals out and still have everything. Or being able to take the drums out. I thought Moises was good because that's what I was doing. But when you use Moises, there's a lot of data loss. When you use Moises, there, there isn't that much data loss. There's a little data loss, but not a lot. Yeah, that 23760. I know it's a lot. But uh, <laughs> I wish Sounds had a, a version of it. You get $60 or $30 or something like that. But yeah. But yeah, man. You said been rocking with Rip X. That over a year. What's up, Advance Instinct? Advance Instinct. Thank you so much for coming on. I truly appreciate it. I thank you all for coming on. I, I appreciate you talking and chatting with me. Yeah, that, that Rip X is, is dope, man. Uh, I put three songs in it so far. Took the... What's up, Iceberg? I said Iceberg Game. What's up, Iceberg Gaming? It says you can convert the stems to MIDI. Man, you can do so much. It's funny. Some things, Ableton can do some of the things, but you got to have the instrumental. I would love to be able to like get an instrumental part, put it in Ableton, learn the keys, and then learn and try to play the keys. I'm wheezing my tail off. Give me a second. Wheezing my tail off. I don't have no beats up either. <clears throat> Yeah, man, shoot. Y'all don't know. So that, that, I didn't even, I haven't even watched the video. Like, I keep watching, uh, I keep starting Marlo Diggs' video, but then I'll stop because I'm doing something else. And I was like, let me just download this thing. I said, let me just download this thing. So I did that. And you get the 21 days uh, of it for free. Man, it's a beast. I mean, it's clear. The drums are clear. Sounds just like the record. If I could play, I will. If I could play, but I, I don't want no content strikes. <laughs> uh, I don't want any of that. Yeah. So yeah, it definitely has the cleanest algorithm. The latest version is even doper. I mean, it sounds amazing. Watched it today while I was folding clothes. <laughs> It is. His channel is a whole vibe, man. I just, I think, um, I want, I like him and um, Ricky, is it Ricky Times or Ricky Times? I think it's Ricky Times. I like his video too, you know, because he's, he's into the music, into the production. He breaks down the beat and he still, it sounds so good when he does it too. Marlo Diggs is good. Um, yeah. Yeah, y'all, check out that documentary. Check out that Jay Dilla documentary. Um, what's uh, what is everybody using as far as production is concerned? That's why people are moving to Twitch. <laughs> yeah, I, I got a Twitch account. I haven't uh, really used it yet. I know um, Soy is real is popping. Soy is real. S O Y I S R E A L. Um, and he makes boom bap beats. I really like him too. Uh, are you still thinking about the Akai MPC keys? Nah. Um, not because I don't want it. It's just because I have the Live 2. If I didn't have the Live 2, I would get the MPC keys. You know what I mean? Some people are like, you know, you can do both. Yo, digging the greats. Yo, he's good too. I like him too. Uh, come to find out, he's uh, when I watched him, he said that he uh, produces for... I'm not produced, but he's in Nas's band. He said, might pay the 80K for that F. Shoot. <laughs> yo. Yo. <laughs> yo, that was funny, my man. Mr. G said, might pay for that 80K for the FLRK machine. <laughs> Yo, they could take that and keep that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It looks cool, too. If I was rich, maybe. You know. But no. That was that was funny, man. That's the laugh of the night, yo. <laughs> he said, might pay the 80K for the FLRK machine. <laughs> then he got the laugh emojis. He said, I fell out the chair. <laughs> he 
yo, the price. That I hope that that slap wasn't too loud, y'all. Forgive me. Oh, that one was hilarious. Are they really serious? 80K. You're in the NC, but was born in Baltimore? Definitely, definitely, man. See you when you're out, out the way, man. Or maybe when I'm down, <laughs> heading on down. Maybe we can connect in as well. Thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Uh, everybody, if you're looking for like uh, kits, sounds, things of that nature, if you're looking for equipment, you know, check my links in the description. I'm currently doing um, affiliate marketing so that I can support this stuff uh, and things of that nature. As well as, you know, I got a distro kit link there because, you know, now I'm back into like, I want to you know, do my music, you know what I mean, from my perspective. So now, um, you know, I had a song out there for years. And it was a song that I did for, you know, honestly, I just did it like if I ever met Kim, I would give him the song. And then, and then I turned it around and then I started using it for um, uh, my wedding anniversary and stuff like that. Um, sorry for the clicking in this room, but it's uh, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this. But this is me. Let me switch screens. Ah, oh, let me take this off here. Just a little bit uh like something I made that's old. I mean old. And uh that's just some stuff I was doing, you know what I mean? He said if I get me a discount on the Octa track, I swear I'll be <laughs> I wish I had one, yo. If I had one I would do it. He said uh MPC studio user, then use a micro sometimes and I'm struggling with studio one. Um uh I think I have someone that can help you out. They use the Studio One. Um, let me, uh, so I'll try to link you up to watch their videos. Uh, create, creative. I gotta think of his name. When I think of it, I'll, I'll get it to you. But chill, y'all. Thank y'all so much for uh, coming on. I truly appreciate it. You know, if you're looking for sounds, sample packs, things of that nature, check the links in the description. If you're looking for equipment and things of that nature, check the links in the description. You said John makes beats has been slaying it on his channel. That's his name, John Makes Beats. I'm gonna check him out. Uh, John Makes Beats. Let me, uh, let me do that. Duplicate John Makes Beats. Dude, you have me, oh my goodness. You said 80,000. 80,000, sheesh. John Makes Beats. Alright, so I'll try that out. So yeah, y'all, I'm about to go off, about to go exercise with the wifey and get our daily exercising on, you know, trying to get some youth back. And uh <laughs> hey, thank y'all so much for coming on. Um, uh, thank y'all for supporting. I truly appreciate y'all. Y'all have a great one. I love it was so much fun, y'all, rapping with y'all on today. Hey, everybody, y'all have a good one. Have a blessed rest of your week and a great night. All right, y'all. Peace.